Collector Boosters can be some of the most exciting packs to open, but each slot in each pack has special rules and a grouping of cards that could be in it. So what exactly is in a Collector Booster? Well, it's sometimes a tricky thing to tell, and it changes with every set. So in this video, we're going to break down exactly what is in each slot of a Collector Booster for Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth. Let's jump right into this. Starting pretty basic, the first slot of a Collector Booster is a foil double-sided token. It's pretty simple, but it will lead every pack. Following that, you'll get a foil full art Middle Earth map basic land. These lands showcase the various maps of the Lord of the Rings world, and you can find a foil one in every pack. After that, you get three foil commons guaranteed. The slot after that, however, is very strange. You can get a fourth foil common, or a special mythic soul ring, or the one of one the one ring. But what are those, and why are they contributing such a high amount to the price of collector boosters for this set? Well, the one of one, the one ring, is a serialized card that they are making exactly one of, as the name implies. It's a version of the one ring, and while not mechanically unique, it will be a double rainbow serialized card worth probably hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not over a million. The odds of pulling it is incredibly low, but if you do, it will replace one of your commons, which is nice. While the one of one ring is highly unlikely, there are also special soul rings which are way more common, but still pretty rare. There are three versions of each with their own quantities. For the elven soul ring, there are 3000 non-foil, non-serialized cards, and 300 double rainbow foil serialized cards. For the dwarven soul ring, there are 7000 non-foil, non-serialized cards, and 700 double rainbow foils. For the human soul ring, there are 9000 non-foil, non-serialized cards, and 900 double rainbow foil serialized cards. These are all mythics, so this will bring our potential rare count up to 1. While the odds of pulling any of them are decently low, it is important to note that the 1 of 1 ring is only found in English collector boosters, and the soul rings are only found in English, French, German, simplified Chinese, and Japanese collector boosters. Next up, you'll get two foil uncommons. Yes, it's that simple. No fancy clauses here, and I kinda wish they were all like that. Either way, next you'll get one traditional foil rare or mythic, bringing our potential rare count up to two and our guaranteed rare count up to one. Following that, you'll get a non-foil extended art rare or mythic. Extended art is the versions of cards where they have the same art as their normal version, but it goes from edge to edge, as opposed to borderless which has different art and goes to every edge. This moves our potential and guaranteed rares up by one to three and two respectively. Next up, you'll get an extended art commander, jumpstart, or start kit rare mythic. This is a slot for the cards that are not found in the normal draft boosters that can be found in precons, jumpstart, and the new starter kit product, which does contain exclusive cards not found in draft boosters, which is a new thing for starter kits. Again, this raises our potential and guaranteed rares up by 1 to 4 and 3 respectively. Following that, you get a ring showcase or a Nazgul uncommon. A ring showcase is not any of the rings we've talked about so far, nor is it any of the cards that say the ring tempts you. Instead, it is the the showcase style for the set where the art is inside of a circle and it shows the characters being tempted. So you'll get a guaranteed ring showcase uncommon or one of the 9 arts for Nazgul, which is not a special frame but instead just 9 different arts for the 9 versions of it you can have in your deck. Following that, you'll get a non-foil borderless land, showcase ring, or box topper rare or mythic. To break that down, it'll either be a borderless land, which is one of the cards with different art that stretches to every end, but it'll only be the lands, not any of the creatures, or one of those ring showcases we talked about a moment ago, or one of the box topper mythics which are non-modern legal reskins of existing magic cards. Although if the card was already legal and modern, it is still legal there, just a lot of them aren't. There are 30 of these, and they look spicy. You'll get a box topper card in about 31% of collector boosters, and you'll get one guaranteed with each draft set or collector booster box. They do not come in jumpstart boxes. These can range from duds like Wajuka Bog all the way up to things like the Great Henge. This raises both our guaranteed and potential rare count by one, since no matter what you get here, you'll get at least a rare, maybe even a mythic, moving us up to five and four respectively. After that, you'll get a non-foil borderless scene card of any rarity. 
These are borderless cards like the others, but they form a scene when placed together with other borderless cards of the same scene. These can range from common to mythic, but they have 7 possible scenes, with this being a common 37.5% of the time, an uncommon 29.2% of the time, and a rare 27.3% of the time, and then finally a mythic 6% of the time. This raises our potential rares up by 1, going up to 6. Next you'll get a traditional foil ring showcase uncommon, or a foil Nazgul, or a foil borderless uncommon or common scene card. This will never be a rare, and we've talked about all of these card types before, just this time it's a guaranteed traditional foil. Finally, the biggest slot in the entire booster, it will be one of these. A traditional foil, rare or mythic, ring showcase, borderless scene or borderless land, or a traditional foil extended art commander mythic, or a surge foil box topper card. These will only show up in 0.8% of boosters, but will be the special foiling done with the Warhammer 40k decks last year. This slot raises both our guaranteed and potential rares by 1, leading to the final value of 7 potential rares or mythics and 5 guaranteed rares or mythics. Now, these collector boosters have a ton of different odds related to them, so let's talk about those chase rings and surge foils. Like I mentioned above, 0.8% of boosters will have a surge foil of the box toppers. This is incredibly low. Even if you open 100 boosters, there's a solid chance you didn't open a surge foil in any of them. These boosters are going for about $35 a piece, meaning you really shouldn't count on getting any surge foils unless you're willing to spend a lot of money or get incredibly lucky. However, the odds on the other rings are even more bleak. The non-foil human ring has the highest chance with a less than 0.3% chance of being in a collector booster. Following that up, the dwarven ring has less than a 0.25% chance, and the elven ring has a less than 0.1% chance. But that's not even for the serialized foil versions. The serialized foil versions have a less than 0.03% chance for the human one, a less than 0.025% chance for the dwarven one, and a less than 0.01% chance for the elven soul ring. But that's not even the rarest card in the set. The one ring, the one of one one ring, has a less than 0.00003% 3% chance of being open. Now, I'm not trying to say don't open these packs, but I wanted to do the math to figure out how much money you'd have to spend to have a statistically probable chance that you opened up a specific version of a rare card in this set. For this, we're assuming $32 per booster, since that's about the price you pay if you buy through booster boxes instead of individually, but you'd have to spend $10,666 to get the human non-serialized soul ring, you'd need to spend about $12,800 to get the dwarven non-serialized soul ring, You'd need to spend about $32,000 to get the Elvish non-serialized soul ring. You'd need to spend about $106,666 to get the human serialized soul ring. You need to spend about $128,000 to get the dwarven serialized soul ring. And you'd need to spend about $320,000 to get the Elvish serialized soul ring. That's a lot of money. You could very easily buy all of those for less than just trying to get the Elvish soul ring by itself. But the one ring is even rarer. You'd have to spend about $106,666,666 in order to have a statistically likely chance of getting it. Obviously, there's only one. There could be a little five-year-old who decides to buy one collector booster and they pull the one ring while you're sitting over here spending a million dollars on boosters. So just understand that getting these are incredibly rare, and if you do open one, make sure you know that and that you know it's worth more than a normal version of the card. The number of people I saw sell cards that were serialized or receive cards that were serialized for way under their estimated value because the person didn't know what they had was incredible, so make sure you are aware. That's pretty much it for this video. If you found it useful, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to see some more content right now, check out this video where I break down all of the mechanics of this set, and this video where I ranked every commander from the last set, Aftermath. See you guys in the next one. Bye.